Punching Up, a Nintendo podcast, is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Welcome to Punching Up, your bi-weekly Nintendo podcast from Last Stand Media. I'm your host, Dustin, and here with me, I've got the full crew again this week. Mama Micah, hello. How are you today? Hello. I was telling Dustin before the show, I was very excited because we got some snow today, and I wasn't actually believing the forecast last night because it was like 62 degrees. It said it was going to snow. I was like, yeah, all right. And then I wake up this morning, there's actually a good amount of snow on the ground. It's rapidly melting, but it was so nice to hear like the crunch of the snow under my shoes as I'm like bringing the dogs outside and everything. That put me in just a completely different mood for a Monday morning. Now now I'm pretty excited about the day. Yeah, you know, the snow, it's it's still a little early for snow with December, or at least here in Western PA. We Sometimes oh, it yeah. can be, <laughs> I mean, some years it can be absolutely hellish. So you never know Western PA weather is uh horrible uh in all exactly. ways but you know a little snow for the pre-holiday season never hurt anybody uh well maybe it hurt somebody at some point surely <laughs> but we My won't grandma get into did that. break her back one year because she slipped on some ice oh, so no. and, and she's fine grandma's fine now this is a couple of years ago but the snow the snow has hurt people and i i should have a vendetta against the snow i should remember what it did to grammy but i just yeah i can't I look at the snow and I'm immediately a child again who wants to go roll around in it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I want to go sled riding again really bad. Yeah. I haven't been in many years. I know if I do that, it's going to make me painfully aware of <laughs> a mo- mostly how out of shape I am. Uh, it's just it's just no climbing the hill again. <sighs> it's going to be but bad. Is it the commercial with the old lady sledding? Is that what did it? Because that made me want to go sledding. Oh, you know what? I actually just saw that commercial yesterday and I normally don't see commercials, but I I saw it at the movie theater. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen uh, that one. Yeah, it's it's hokey. It's like an Amazon, you know, Jeff Bezos joint. Yeah. Dagan, I hear your voice here. How are you today? My cold, my flu head cold voice. Yeah. Apologies to my crew here. Apologies to my PU peeps listening out there. I'm very stuffed up. Turned 50, got some massive cold. I don't know. It won't go away. It's strange, though. Like, I still have my appetite. I still want to drink my coffee. I'm still sleeping okay. It's just, I don't know. It's just like this head congestion. I think it's just a sign of old age. This is what's going to happen now. This is what life's going to be. Sickness. And we're just settling you know. in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be infirmed for, from here on out. But it's good to see you guys. Yeah. And congrats on the birthday. It's a, it's a big one. And I heard of something that Colin said that I... I personally think is the greatest compliment that you just feel you have such a young, you, you have a, a youthful vibe. No, oh, I that, appreciate that. You know, some people, here's the thing that always frustrates me. I'm, there's some people that never grow up and you're like, come on, man, you're kind of a loser. Like you gotta, you gotta change your ways to some degree, but there's, there's a part of you too, that not you, I'm the Royal you. And I'm like, dude, I'm always going to have my, maybe not always, but I like having my amiibos up in my living room. I'm not going to change oh, yeah. that. That's who I am. And I like that you also, you're like, yeah, I'm not changing it. Immature. I'm who I am. That's really what it is. It's just, that's a nice positive spin. I appreciate that dust on just being immature. You know what <laughs> occurred to me though? I'm, I'm totally down, like not down, not down. I shouldn't say it that way. I'm actually, I got the go ahead. I got the thumbs up if I want to move to a 50 and over community. Oh. Can you imagine if I moved to a 50, like the, they would just, everybody would just move out. So here mm. comes this skateboarding <laughs> kid. Have you seen his office is full of toys and retro video games? It's like 50 and over. Seriously? It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not ready to embrace. I'm, I guess I'm not your typical 50 year old. And mm-hmm. sometimes I, I, I celebrate that. And sometimes it makes me feel like something's wrong with me. It's like, why can't I just get on the same page as these other old, old timers? Well, Dave, you mentioned, we, we talked about this at some point about how, You know, you are the first generation of of dads, we'll say, that grew up liking nerd stuff. So I'm sure that there are there are many not that there's only one Dagon, but there are (laughs) Dagon wannabes out there. 
that also are I'll like take you. It. I'll take it. You bring up the, the the over 50 retirement home. I mean, that might be kind of lit because you don't have don't have to worry about any house responsibilities. I'm assuming they cook your meals. Imagine all the gaming time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm trying to move there as, as fast as possible, really. Uh, but just something to think about. Last but not least, of course, Gene Park. How are you today, Gene? Good morning. Doing good. Good morning. Sorry, I missed our last episode. Glad well, the future we episode. Missed. Oh, the future episode. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. It's like Alan Wake. Time is time is uh, <laughs> time in time in, in the, 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 the LSM space is uh, <laughs> very fluid. Yeah, it's everything's all messed up right now because we are so many episodes ahead on Constellation that the episode that's about to go out was recorded three weeks ago. Oh yeah, Constellation is like stacked up like crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, really it's messing is. with me so bad because in my head I was like, I guess nobody liked my topic because I haven't seen a single comment about it. And then I was like, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it's right. just things like that keep happening where I'm like, man, I, I'm surprised we haven't gotten any comments about, you know, X, Y, Z that I because I hear obviously all these shows being recorded, even if I'm not on them. And then I realize like it hasn't it's not posted yet. <laughs> yeah, I, for, I forgot what we recorded, you know. Oh, yeah. dude, that, I mean. Forgetting what you record, that doesn't that doesn't take recording in advance. Sometimes that takes true. ten minutes <laughs> after you're done. Uh, Dave, it I, in the same episode, yeah. Oh, yeah, within the same episode, absolutely. Every once in a while, someone tweets something like, "Well, you said this on this episode," and like, did I? Yeah. Like, did I really? Oh, yeah. Which sometimes people make stuff up. I think they have like a head canon of what you said. That fits whatever they're thinking at the time that that can happen, too. So you can't basically trust no one, including yourself <laughs> in terms of history of your own. Anything's possible. Just make it up as you go. Uh, speaking of making up history last night, my history day, I want to tell you mm. it's not appropriate for the show. Not inappropriate. I saw the new Miyazaki movie. Oh, how and is it? I'm just telling you, you got to go. I have to go see it on the big mm. screen. I want to support. Dude. It is some of the animation in it is so fantastic. And I was thinking, too, one of the things that stuck out to me was just the the Studio Ghibli color palette is so uniquely them. I, and I don't I don't I'm not a colorist. I don't understand it. I'm not an animator, but I, I'm like, man, when I see other animated movies that even Japanese animated movies, I'm like, the colors are not the same. There's something about the way they do it. So it's so much more than just the animation. It's so good. Oh, dude, just I'm so say glad that. to hear people are liking it. I was just saying that to Helene. And also the thing of like, it's sad to say, I don't mean to be grim, but could be Miyazaki's last. Could probably be. won't be. He'll probably live for another 50 years. God bless him. But mm. that's one reason just to go and just see it on. I, I, you got to you gotta just, you got to put the money, be, you got to support Ghibli. You just have to, you know. So to go see it in the theater, <clears throat> that's the way to do it, I think. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fantastic. So I recommend. Oh, people. awesome out there uh let's get into one quick writing here from david hutchins kind of kick us off that says punching up crew it has been a great year you have all had your own milestones dustin turned 30 i believe true micah got hitched dagan joined uh joined me at 50 and gene beat cancer again i am sure i speak for many we all look forward to another great year of content from each of you so yeah this is our it's not our last episode of the year we've got something recorded for you guys next week so you have or not next week the week after next so you've got you got something coming but this is our last recorded episode and yeah, yeah it's uh it's uh it's been a big year for us all around and uh, i mean also just the introduction of punching up introduction of constellation for last stand two yeah and uh yeah we're not fucking slowing down either <laughs> next year so david thank you for the kind words will be happy and we'll be here for you starting in 2024 for sure guys patreon.com slash last hand media uh that's where we are funded that's where we live that's our home where we hang out and we'd love to have your support there if you like the show of course you can get early access the show for patrons comes out on tuesday so you get early access normally for everyone else it's friday but if you want early Go ahead, join us there. The audio is ad-free. And of course, all the other shows you get in addition. Sacred Symbols, Finding Duke, Knockback, 
constellation, sacred symbols plus, defining Duke ultimate, all that stuff. <laughs> so it's it, it can't even say it in one breath. There's so much value there. Just the five dollar tier. So consider. And also, if you're not over there, that's fine too. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, you can leave us a comment, leave us a rating on iTunes, Spotify, whatever. All that stuff helps us out. We especially need it as a growing new show from Last Stand. Okay, guys, let's get into some stuff. I don't have a main topic this week because there's not a lot of, there's not been like, you know, there's no big new releases, nothing like that. But I do have some news items, which is welcome just because there was no news last episode. Let's first talk about the Game Awards and how Nintendo took home a few wins. But unfortunately, they were not the bell of the ball, right, Micah? They were not the bell of the ball there. <laughs> they, not this uh, time. Not this time. You know, sometimes they are, but not this time. But it doesn't work if you only you say it, Dustin. It doesn't work the same. I thought maybe, uh, you know, I kind of wanted Micah to say it after I did, but then she didn't. But now it won't be the same. I don't think she needs, she, I mean, she, I, she, she should say it right now, though. I think we should we, we should keep that bullet in the hmm. chamber for. Yeah. For, for the special Save, just, she'll just when we don't expect it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so Nintendo did take home three awards that night. And so let's go over them. It's Zelda Tears of the Kingdom wins best action adventure game. Super Mario Brothers Wonder wins best family game. And this is the surprise, I think, to some degree is Pikmin 4 wins best sim and strategy game. So winning, you know, just many times more the amount of awards that Spider-Man did. Pikmin 4, which Ooh. that hurts. For some of these uh, people on Twitter that are losing their mind mm. over Spider-Man not winning anything. But yes, it's true. Pikmin 4 won a game award. So, Gene, I know you were following, you were watching uh, the game awards with, with Jaffe and, and did a big article on the Washington Post. So what do you, I mean, you can take this the Nintendo route or just overall in general, your, your thoughts about this year. Um, yeah, well, Nintendo won three more awards than Sony did. If we want to, uh, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if we want to continue the the pouring more salt into the salt, the, the salty <laughs> wounds of, of of PlayStation fans, uh, which sucks. But then look, uh, another it makes you also realize Sony didn't even win best VR game, dude. With Horizon Call of the Mountain, dude. What what right? did win best VR? Resident Evil, Villa, uh, Resident Evil uh, oh, Village, I think, sense. or Re Re Resident Evil Village, or oh. Resident Evil 4. Re Re it was Resident Evil. That's kind of like a soft win, though, because that's an exclusive for them. Mm -hmm. So I bet you they paid for it. Uh, I'm not sure, though. But yeah, you're, you're right. They didn't win. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sony, Sony first party did, uh, didn't win anything. I mean, that's that's I think that's what's what, what's breaking uh, the, the PlayStation player's brain. Mm hmm. Like the PlayStation player has been trained on being like, oh, the Sony first party game will win a lot of wars. If even if not game of the year, like out of Water War, Ragnarok last year, you know, it's still gonna like reap a bunch of stuff, right? But uh Spider-Man 2 didn't get a single thing and that and it's it's funny that nobody is complaining about how Horizon didn't win because nobody played Horizon Call of the Mountain, you know? Yeah. I did play some of it. I, I just played some uh, of it too. Uh, it's not really as good as Resident Evil Village, so no, mm, no, no, definitely not. Uh, but yeah, for these awards, uh, Zelda winning best action adventure. You know, I mean, what the fuck does action adventure even mean? You know, um, as a as a as a title, I think. You know, I I wrote my piece. Maybe we can link it down below. But I wrote about the winners and losers of the game awards, and uh, I, I one thing I don't mention is it would be nice to to kind of rethink the categories. Um, to just be a little bit more timeless and classier other than just sounding like they were ripped off the the, the game pro uh, 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 pages in terms of you know categorizing games you know best action game and then there's best best action adventure are we gonna have better best adventure game you know mm -hmm. um, like like where does it end right uh, but that being said Zelda did deserve to be, win best action adventure um Best family game, also like, what does that mean? You know, uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I played Metal Gear Solid with my dad. Is that a family game? <laughs> exactly. I mean, come on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, Metal Gear is a great game to play with your father. You know, uh, there's action hero. It's very, it's very mil militaristic. 
um dude it's it's such a great game to play with with, 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 with you it's such a dad's game right yeah dads get it yeah yeah um so yeah what does that mean best family game come on it just means best kitty game and mario wonder's not that kitty um Hey, yeah, congrats to Pikmin 4, best sim strategy game. I, I, it, was, it was nice to see Pikmin 4 winning something. I never finished Pikmin 4, Pikmin 4 but I do know it's really good. And um, yeah, so Nintendo walked away. Doug Bowser and Re, uh, the current president of Nintendo and Reggie, the former president of Nintendo, were both in attendance, as well as Eiji Anuma, who was one of the many developers who were shooed off stage uh, with the Please Wrap It Up. Uh, Please wrap it up. Sucks. I hate that. Yeah, that everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I, 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 I would love to hear Dagan uh, uh, pop off on this, but <laughs> my take on this, uh, on that, is that yeah, it's very disappointing, and I say as much in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, in my article. Uh, uh, A.G. Anuma was rushed off stage. Uh, Sven Vinke, the director of uh, Baldur's Gate Three, uh, who or the, the studio director. Uh, they won game of the year, Baldur's Gate three, and they got shoot off stage as they were talking about you know uh, cast members or st- staff members who passed away. Uh, uh, Sam Lake, who won best director or best narrative, he he got rushed off stage. Even Neil Druckmann, uh, the the the, the vaunted creator of The Last of Us, and a, a friend of Jeff's. So this is why I think. I don't think Jeff Keighley meant it. The meant it for the developers to just get get the second shaft, the, the, just to just get, get, just get shafted that way. They did get shafted. I think uh, we, anyone with eyes and ears can see that that they got screwed over. I don't think Jeff meant that for for that to happen. He wouldn't do that to someone like Neil. You know, uh, I, I don't think he would do that to anybody. But I, I definitely like. I don't think he would want to rush Neil. I think part of it is, is uh, you know, he uh, he gets he lets like some of the bigger production like Kojima's uh, whole entrance that had that took up like 10 to 10, 12 minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, he, sh- he should probably give a, little, a lot more guidance to the Hollywood celebrities like Anthony Mackie, who just oh. was having a stroke on stage. Just like uh, he, Gene, do he you think sing- do you think he's trying to have a Keanu? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was clearly trying to have a counter moment where yeah. it was like, ooh, shut ooh. I was like, dude, are you, are you okay, bro? I was so high, and he was making it worse. I was so high when I was watching the show with, with Jeffy, and he was, and Mackie made it so much worse because I was like, I'm, what, am I okay? Like, what, what am I, what am I hearing yeah. from this man? Um, but that's, but I think it, it again going back to whether it, it was Jaffe's fault or, or Jaffe, um, Keely's fault. Um, it's definitely Jaffe's fault somehow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, this whole J- thing. J- Jaffe Keely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, I don't. I don't. I. I. It, it is Keely's fault, but I don't think he meant to 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 shaft the developers. I just think that it's part of the live production thing, and he, and you know the, the staff just. He's wrong that that no one was cut off. People were getting cut off left and right towards the end of the show, or at least they were feeling rushed. Um, but I, it, it just feels like it was just miscommunication all the way down to the production staff and whoever was fucking pushing the pushing that button. You know, it all comes down to that. You know, uh, I'm from Hawaii, uh, where there was a guy who pushed a button that says a nuclear missile is about to hit uh, uh, the, uh, the state. So, you know, clerical error, clerical error is like guys pushing buttons at the wrong time uh, yeah. is, is, is a classic mistake in history. But yeah, that's my take on the Game Awards so far. Dig in. I don't know if our audience know, maybe the punching up audience doesn't know me, but surely the last stand does. Mm. You're a bit of an award winner yourself. Oh, gosh. Uh, here and there, you know, maybe winning a few in Emmy, I, I guess. Is, is that what it's called again? An Emmy? Yeah, I, I don't know. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's cute. <laughs> just a little small award, you know, no big deal. So you have some experience. What do you think? Which, when you want, did you, how, what was that process? I, this actually is probably opening up a whole can of words. I've never actually <laughs> talked to you about that. I'm a little curious about it, but I guess we can touch on that if we want. But how did you, I don't know if you got to see this or you just seeing the clips online. I mean, surely the, there's like the image that people saw, like of the, the please wrap it up. Uh, that's kind of the, that's the image that's going to go down for 2023 when we think about the Game Awards is the, the please wrap it up. It's so funny that we can't get better at this because if you think of dating back many decades, right, with the Oscars, 
the award ceremony live TV thing is nothing new, right? And I know it's kind of tough and it's kind of tricky to account for because this is unformatted, unscripted time. So it's a little bit like herding kittens, right? But there's something in there where you have to learn how just to be better at it. And it's also really important when you're giving people their flowers like and the whole thing of like letting them hold that bouquet for 10 seconds and then taking it, throwing it on the ground, stomping on it. That's that's what it's like. It's like, where is the reverence? Like these are these are the legends. These are the these are the people that are the keystone of why we're here in the first place. So it's just a bad look, you know, and it's so funny that it hasn't changed and that they can't learn how to get better at it. But I think I mean, one thing they could do and I have a very specific TV animation skill set and experience like I you know so I don't know about live TV but if they just account for or slot like an extra half hour or 45 minutes or something then they could fill that space if people go over and then just tell people to keep it within reason like don't stand up there like I know Kojima and Peel and everything that you know that whole thing was a little different because that was a that was a more staged um, announcement type of component to the show. But, you know, just have people be able to have some sort of breath of, um, you know, accepting their award, giving their thanks, and letting the fans appreciate that moment rather than kind of shooing them off stage or that whole old school animation thing of the hook, you know, taking them off or the gong. It's like, it's just, it's just uncomfortable. You know, it's uncomfortable for the people there. It's uncomfortable for the audience. So, but it is funny. You know, and I don't, I, I don't, I've gotten nominated for four Emmys, individual Emmy awards. I never won one, two for animation, two for character design. I have a group Emmy from working mm. on one season of Sesame Street. I think it was season 51 that we won while I was there working on the show. Cause a lot, I did a lot of stuff at Sesame Workshop off the show, off the main show. So I don't have my own. I have one group Emmy win, but that was, you know, that was like a 500 person win. So it's like, you know, I don't have a statue Dude, or anything. I got the whole statue. You cannot possibly downplay winning an Emmy to me. It's pretty no. fun. cannot it's successfully do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like the uh, Super Bowl, you have all the people on your team. Nobody wins it on their own, but you still won a Super Bowl. That's it's how true. That works. It's true. I mean, you know what? I was involved before, um, I guess in the early to mid aughts, I was involved in the New York chapter of Emmy voting. Like I was on the voting board and I don't mean to speak ill of the Emmys or any other big awards, but there's a lot of politics. It's not oh. always, you know, the best horse doesn't always win the race, you know, which I guess is indicative of any kind of award thing, but I saw a lot of behind the scenes. So it's not as, uh, it does, in a, in a way, it's charming. First of all, did you guys know you have to buy the statue? If you win. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, you, it was like back, you know, in my day, 10 years ago, it was like $500. You have to buy the statue. And maybe the company you work for would buy you the statue, but often the case, you, you're you going out of pocket for it, which I thought, always thought was interesting. And then the other thing is winning an Emmy is cool. It's nice to have in your mantle. Like I would love to have one in my background, but sometimes it prices you out of jobs. People see that on your resume and they're like, oh, we can't afford him. We, you know, oh, so it, it, yeah. it kind of stalls even negotiation or anything like that because sometimes you don't even go to the negotiating board for a job because they just think you're priced out of the conversation. So I could see it has a detrimental effect too, which is interesting. But I mean, for Nintendo, you know what's funny about doing this episode with you guys? It's so funny that we think Nintendo hasn't had, this is really indicative of Nintendo's 2023, I think. It's so funny because they've been so busy. There's been so much great stuff coming out and such a consistent rhythm of new things that it feels like, oh, Nintendo's in hibernation. It's been like three weeks since they gave us anything. It's like, oh, I guess they're, you know, I guess it's <laughs> yeah. we'll see them next year type of thing. But I like that they got a little bit of shine. You know, they're three big first party things. Got to pull in a trophy, get a little bit of shine. The family game is, is funny for Super Mario Wonder, but it also came out such a short time ago. It's so nice to see it recognized when it hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been on people's periphery for very long. That's got, that was kind of neat. And um, yeah, some of them seem like they're, it's almost like a placating type thing, like throw them in this kind of really broad family game category. But it's nice just to see them have, it's nice to see them recognized in general. So that was, yeah. you know, that was fun. I imagine, you know, Doug Bowser, he takes the awards back to, uh, you know, Nintendo headquarters in Seattle or whatever. 
and uh, they have a giant like Scrooge like vault there, and he just pitches them in there with all the money, <laughs> you know. And that's one of that's one of many vaults that they have scattered all over. And just uh, I sometimes think about Nintendo and uh, maybe some other. I, I don't particularly Nintendo. They can see all these games win awards and then they can think something like oh yeah that piece of shit we put out earlier this year <laughs> sold more than every award winner here combined you know like they it's just i wonder if they even care to some i'm sure they do they send doug there it's nice they want to participate but you know in terms of sales and money they're probably just like yeah that's cute but micah we haven't heard from you at all i know were you suffering through this as well with colin when on thursday night because <laughs> oh, i know absolutely. colin and i were texting where i was like i'm so bored right now please <laughs> end it did you guys watch yeah. all watch it separate did, did the sacred crew watch it all separately like yes in, yeah. on your own time that's interesting yeah yeah, yeah Micah, what do you think it wasn't my favorite game awards ever there were a couple trailers i saw that i was like yeah that, that looks interesting but things we already knew about type deal right um I am super happy, though, to see these Nintendo wins. I I don't know. Pikmin 4 especially, uh, much like Gene, I didn't actually finish it. I got to the last section of the game, and I didn't really enjoy that part as much uh, as the previous, you know, environments that you get to visit. So I never actually finished it. It is a goal for my holiday break that I want to finish Pikmin 4. But I am really happy that it did win that, just so more people will see it, you know. Pikmin's popular enough that... Well, they made a fourth one. They redid the you know first two for Switch. But I do want to see just more people playing it, trying it out. I definitely like I recommend Pikmin 3 higher than Pikmin 4, mm. but I'm just happy to see it getting some recognition and hopefully it will make more people aware of the series. I kind of think that's a better family game, though, than Mario Brothers Wonder, partly because of the feedback I've seen from people about the way your characters interact with each other on screen now and various things that make the local co-op more difficult. Particularly things like, you know, whoever gets the flagpole first controls the cursor afterwards, right? And things like that that make it harder for dad to kind of rein in the kids if you're playing with children and you want to be like, I'm the team leader, I'm going to choose the next stage and all that stuff. And it's like, whoever gets there first, they're in control now. And like, Things like that make the game a little less friendly to like local co-op and just some of those niceties people expected aren't there. But I overall, I'm just happy to see that Nintendo did get these three awards. They're not the biggest awards of the night, but they're ones that I think do matter. And I'm just happy because I don't know, I see like the weirdest criticism of Nintendo that it's the same game every time. They're all children's games, stuff like that. And as people who play a lot of Nintendo, we obviously don't really agree with that statement. But I also just think that it's it's getting more recognition for some of the naysayers, perhaps. Maybe they won't actually try Pikmin 4, but maybe they'll think, well, it's not like complete shit like I thought it was, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I am just happy to see these wins. And, you know, maybe it's like some of the softer categories, but, you know, it, it's something, <laughs> you know, wins a win at the end of the day. And yeah, uh, Mario Wonder, though, is best family game. I don't know. It's too hard for me. So I don't know if I would say it's the best family game. But also, I feel like it's just in a year of I can't think of a lot of like really notable family games that I would put up against it either. So I think it's like it's a fitting win. I just don't know like, what else would I put in that category to go like as better than that. I don't really have anything. Yeah, I'm not sure either what would fit in there. Honestly, I'm sh I had the other uh, nominees pulled up. Let's see here. Best family. The other stuff that got nominated was uh, Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars. Oh, Party, <clears throat> Party Animals is so good, though. I think Party Animals should have mm. won. <laughs> so, OK, Gene, I have a question about Party Animals. Yeah. Is that game just Gang Beasts? Yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. It just looks like it looks like Gang Beast. Did they just rip off it, Gang Beast, but have more marketing behind it? I think like, so. I, yeah, I'm really confused. I don't know a lot about it. I just know what I've seen. I'm like, oh, that's Gang Beast. <clears throat> it is Gang Beast, though. Yeah, you're right. Hmm, that's so weird. Uh, I've heard it's fun though. Yeah, but, I mean that's probably, that's probably why it didn't win because it's not it's not an original concept. But you know, yeah. 
Digging, you played some of that Disney Illusion Island. Yes. Right? And you like that? That's a great point. And that's a great multiplayer game. And also in that tradition of platforming with not a lot of, you know, there's non-violence, there's not shooting, quote unquote, and stuff like that. That one would fit the bill. Very high quality presentation too. Kind of um, took a page out of modern Disney television's animations versions of Mickey, put its own spin on it, and then really made a platformer that was very thought out in, in terms of mechanics and fluidity and stuff like that. It was really fun and really beautifully done graphically, like the settings and the backgrounds, the effects, the underwater levels. Like It felt like the best old school platformers for, like from the 16-bit era, but with that, that polish, that modern polish in terms of graphical... Um, I guess graphical relevance for kids today that they're not, oh, this looks, this looks dated. You know, this looks old school. Um, and it was fun and it was long and it was cheap. I think I bought the physical cartridge for, you know, the physical version of it for $39.99. So it wasn't mm-hmm. even premium price, which I thought was nice. It, you know, yeah. knocked 10 or 20 bucks off the price, which I thought was cool because it was a premium experience. That would be a good contender for, for, but I mean, Wonder is just, how can you, in terms of Nintendo platforming, I mean, you right. can't beat, can't beat the master of the game. You know, it's not quite as good as Wonder. It's worth pointing out, too, that Nintendo, uh, we, we talked about these awards, but made no announcements at the Game Awards, which isn't that surprising to me. I think I'm trying to remember of stuff that they've announced in the past at the Game Awards. In fact, maybe their biggest announcement they've ever done there was when they announced smash brothers dlc Mm. of joker when smash brothers ultimate was releasing the next day uh which i remember that very vividly because that was one of the game awards that i was at and uh i remember me and me and the boys so ben brandon i think our friend phil was there we went to a target in la the next day to buy super smash brothers ultimate uh together and it was funny because the YouTube, we were at this party that was through the Game Awards that was YouTube gaming, and they gave us all hoodies. I was like, dude, I'm going to wear this hoodie because I don't have a jacket. I'm like, hopefully there aren't other people around wearing this hoodie because that'd be kind of weird to match somebody with this very specific creator's jacket that we got. And sure enough, I'm in the game section and the entire YouTube gaming team is there also wearing the hoodie. To buy Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And they're like, hey, man, nice ja- nice hoodie. And I was like, oh, no. Thanks, man. Cool. I'm glad we can <laughs> I can match with the YouTube gaming team. With the cool guys. Yeah. Did you so feel was, like... I, it's kind of cool, though. I f- feel like Nintendo... Again, it's indicative of their year. Like, they're going out on such a high. Like, they're going out on top. I feel like announcing anything last minute might have run the risk of feeling anticlimactic. Like, they don't want to blow it. You know, where everybody's like, oh, right. that's an announcement. And then, you know, they kind of want to ride this high on the way out of the year. So I like that they're going out. They, in other words, they didn't need to. I feel like they didn't really need to say anything. Let's get a... I know this isn't about the Game Awards, but it, it's just a question I have since we're talking about a slightly... Say a slightly silent Nintendo. This is... I don't think they've done anything abnormal. But while we're thinking about it, gut check for next year. When will... They speak on the next switch. What mm. let's say what month? What do you think? Micah, mm-hmm. let's start with you. What month? I don't I want to say I'm going for spring. I don't I don't think it's coming out early next year. Like the original switch came out in March. I don't think it's coming out early next year, but I want to say maybe we hear about it like March or April. We get like a maybe not even the confirmation of like the date because I feel like it's gonna be holiday that's like that's my feeling is that it's gonna be holiday season this Mm -hmm. time around as part of the motivation to get parents to buy it because you are just gonna have a ton of parents who are like you already have a switch why do you need the new one but this will be like well it's my Christmas thing it's it's the only thing I'm asking for and that's half the way to get what you want for Christmas is like well it's the only thing I want it's like well all right fine you know so I feel like it's going to be holiday. I'm hoping we hear at least some more details, maybe like a bit of a reveal in spring. But it's, I don't know, it's really hard to gauge with Nintendo because I also feel like they just sneak up on me sometimes and I have no idea what to expect. Uh, Gene, what are you thinking? When are we going to get this announcement? I feel like they'll probably announce it in the, within the first quarter. Um, yeah. But Big. who knows? Uh, 
Oh. I thought Grand Theft Auto 6 would be uh, coming out earlier too, and I was mm. wrong about that. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, uh, that sting yeah, of 2025. Expect, I did not expect 2025. 2025. No. I was really, really hoping for something with it, at least at, by the end of 2024. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're dying. And uh, <laughs> we have one last year to play GTA 6. We are dying. I need GTA 6 right now. It oh, looks so right good. Now. It's going to be so good. No, it's I... it ridiculous. I didn't even watch the trailer because when Colin told me it wasn't coming out till 2025, I was like, then I'll just wait. Oh, yeah, because yeah. if it's, I was like, if it's yeah. not coming out sooner, then I don't want to see it yet. I don't want to be all excited for this game and I'm still have to wait that long to play it. I was like, never mind. I'll just, I'll just try and forget about it until then. I know, but so many people have watched the trailer already. And so of course, and of course I had to see it and it's like, oh my God, I have to wait this long. Dig, what but, do you think uh, the time I'm playing frame GTA is? 4 now oh. just to. Oh, oh, just to feel stuff. something. Just to feel, just so, yeah, just to feel <laughs> something. But it's like, man, there's like barely any people in the streets out here. In GTA Four, the, the car density in GTA Four is actually really, really good. Uh, there's actually a shit ton of cars in the streets, but the people, there's barely any people there. There's yeah, like that's or, true. There's like three or four people on the screen at once. The good it's, point. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dagan. Yeah. Well, you know, what? I mean, we need more rock stars, though. We need those the devs that put out the final game, no patch. You know, that whole anti-patch mentality. Like, I, I feel like even the announcement, like it's rock star. Like, I think it would have been a baller move not even to say anything. Just wait till twenty twenty five. People are gonna, people are gonna be there. But I mean, I understand you want to work up a little excitement. That that makes sense. I mean, you know what? With Nintendo announcing the new thing, the hopefully titled Super Switch, I think. They got a couple of things, bigger things coming out. When does uh, Princess Peach Showtime come out? March 22nd? March sometime. So they'll let that breathe for four to six weeks. So they may, I could kind of predict that they might do like an Eastery late April, early May announcement of the next thing, get the hype machine going for probably, I would love it to be winter, not fall, like a Christmas release for the new console. But there, I gotta say, I know I said this before, but there's some kind of like rubbernecking, watching the car wreck mentality, where I almost feel like it would be so great if they went through 2024 and still were milking the switch. Like they didn't release the new console until 2025, just because it hasn't ever. There's never been a console generation milked for that period of time. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I you know, I think. That could be a bad move, but there's just something in me, something mischievous in me that's like, I want to see them try that, you know, and see what the reaction is. Could they do it with software? Could they do it with the Metroid Prime game or something and surprise everybody? This is going to be on Switch after all this time, you know, that type of thing. If they do some really shocking, bold moves, again, I'm not sure that's good for a corporation to stay in the black. But from a fan perspective, I just want to see what kind of hijinks ensue if they try to do that. I'm kind of leaning that I'm I'm wondering if it's going to be earlier. For the reason I say this is just that Nintendo traditionally is always, maybe not always, because you know, not the Wii U, but I think of the 3DS and other stuff where Nintendo has continued to support the old console mm. and release new and even exclusive games for the prior generation for a decent amount of time after and do with the switch install i just wonder if they're not afraid of having the new console announcement let's say it's within the first three months like gene was saying and princess peach also coming out i think that princess peach kind of i don't want people to take this the wrong way but i think it kind of seems like a more budget game yeah it's not you know, and that's not a bad thing. It just, no, you know, it's I, not top tier type. Right. Thing. It's a smaller scale game. And I, yeah. I think that's great. But I just think that they're looking at that like, oh, that well, who not not who cares about Princess Peach, but just like, hey, we want to make sure we have our releases lined up, whether we have a console announced or not. People are going to come out and buy this game for the millions and millions of people that have Switch. So I'm thinking earlier, I think, well, I guess, yeah, announcement with Gene in the first three months, maybe summer release, too. That, that would be, be amazing. It because also would be amazing in this day and age of like YouTube and social media if they were dodging, if they were able to keep it that secret. That would be a mm. that would be a power move because that's never been done. Where it's like they just really blindside everybody with the release. That would be amazing. I wonder if a more realistic timeline. Thinking about Switch, 
How long was it between Switch announcement, initial announcement, and release? Mm. Was it six months? Yeah, I think so. It was pretty quick. It was pretty quick. So then if it was announced in mm. January or February, then we could maybe see a, a summer release. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. That would. Anyway, that was a total side tangent. I just wanted to check in with you guys <laughs> about that. Let's move on to number two of our news. And that is Epic is trying to get Nintendo in Fortnite. This is this is obvious. This is something that is kind of like a water is wet. It just was never acknowledged that water is wet, where we knew that Epic is trying to get pretty much everybody in Fortnite. But when uh, Axios talked to Epic and the quote was, quote, when we asked how Oh, yeah, this is from Axios. When we asked how hard Epic had tried to woo Nintendo, Pearson told Axios, I don't know what the word for, like, making diamonds is. Nintendo has their strategy, and we have our strategy. And we hope at some point to use their characters uh, because our players would love it. And this is something I see talked about a lot, especially recently now that Fortnite is seemingly... I don't know about bigger than ever, but it feels like it because they're definitely taking a turn with Fortnite by including all these different games within Fortnite. It's taking like it's it's Roblox turn. And yeah, I think that there are it is a little suspicious that we have every other gaming entity represented, you know, represented with uh, Microsoft having Master Chief in there, of course, and then Sony with Aloy and Nathan Drake and other examples as well. Uh, but Nintendo, not present at all. And I think that I get it. Nintendo doesn't want Mario running around with an AK-47. But I could see Metroid running around with an AK-47. Mm, mm. You know, I don't know. Micah, do you think that uh, is Nintendo right to be protective of some of their IP or should they throw Epic a bone with, with someone random? Like, I don't know. Should they put Rick in in Fortnite, the hamster that might be yeah. something to consider no put gino in Fortnite. i oh. am torn on this because it's true that it's the it's very nintendo to be like look they could make a ton of money off this it's the new hot thing that everybody's playing and this would just get more eyes on their characters but you're right that like Un unless they wanted to be sticklers and say you can only use mario in the modes that don't have guns well, that'd be weird, and I don't know how you'd enforce that. Like, it's a whole debacle that I don't think they want to touch it. I don't think they want to have their characters running around with actual weapons versus just, like, a hammer or, like, you know, a mallet, something much more tame. But it is. Fortnite has become so much more at this point. When I went to visit uh, my sister and, and her kids back in summer, I didn't realize all the new modes that have been added to Fortnite. And I'm watching my nephew play it, and, like, I was just like, this is Fortnite because all I want to play is just, you know, the one where you shoot people and build stuff. And he's playing like they're cool modes. I just had no idea they existed of like you're running uphill and you're dodging, you know, cars that are coming at you, stuff like that. They have added so much to it. But I, I, I am torn on it because it feels very, you know, the bad Nintendo of we don't want to get in on something that's going to make us a lot of money or that would make fans happy. But at the same time, I do feel like it wouldn't be great to see Princess Peach, you know, with like an actual like gun that looks like a gun type thing versus like Mario, you know, rabbits, they have in like blasters, you know, that's acceptable. I feel like for what this um, for what Nintendo is and what their characters represent, but it, it would be kind of weird to see some of our beloved, wholesome characters in that light. So I, I think they're probably doing what they feel is best for their own culture surrounding their characters. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd want to actually see them join Fortnite, despite the fact that I'm sure it would indeed make a lot of fans oh, happy. Man. There's so many characters to choose from anyway. So, I mean, it's not like there's not enough variety. They added the anime characters as well. Like it, there's so many options on Fortnite. Nobody's lacking. Dagan, do we need Link doing the gritty? Yes or no? <laughs> I think it would kind of break my heart. I got to be honest with you. I, I kind of love this. This is what I love about Nintendo. And they, you know, first of all, you got to give them their props, right? They're walking away from making a mountain of money, right? Another mountain. And, and, and they're saying, I mean, they, they are a masterclass and this is how you marshal and protect your IP, right? Because... 
you don't want to put your characters in those. You want to be able to have some autonomy with how your characters are, what they do, how they conduct themselves. And Fortnite's a very open-ended game. Now they're doing battle with, with you know, um, Goku or Superman or Spider-Man or, you know, whoever, one of the Star Wars characters. This is how, but this is also, so it's, I think there's something in Fortnite, and I understand, I'm looking at it from an adult perspective as a kid, I'd be so psyched to play as Samus in Fortnite, right? But as an adult, you look at it and you're like, yes, it's fun, but in a way, seeing Spider-Man or seeing one of the Dragon Ball characters or whoever pop up in Fortnite does kind of cheapen things a little bit. It cheapens it, right? And this is Nintendo's way of, this is how you establish that your IP is Fendi and everything else is Walmart. You know what I mean? Like my stuff's too good to go in there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I think that's what makes Nintendo's IP feel premium and the fact that they know that's the side their bread is buttered on. You know what I mean? They they go as Mario goes. So it's worth kind of that kind of restraint. Like, all right, we're going to sacrifice millions by not putting, you know, insert IP here into Fortnite. But in the long run, it behooves us as a company, as a corporation. That's the that's the responsible way to do it. Gene, I uh, I meant to read this question at the beginning, but it does bring up uh, an interesting angle to look at. So let me read it now to to pitch it to you from Real Radic, who says, "What's well, good, punching up crew? Feels like Fortnite is on top of the world right now with additions like Lego Fortnite, Fortnite Festival, and Rocket Racing. Lego Fortnite alone has been averaging over one million concurrence per day since its launch." Wow. Despite Fortnite having all sorts of IPs from games, anime, music, film, etc., mm. there's still one big publisher they haven't collaborated with yet, Nintendo. What is Nintendo's hang-up? Do you think that this collaboration will ever happen? I know the easy answer is a skin of a character like Samus or Captain Falcon, but I think a few LEGO exclusive skins would be a nice compromise since that mode is rated E10+. Thanks and take care. I didn't even consider that route now that they have this Lego mode, which I don't really know how their their store now is so confusing because there's <laughs> there's songs in there. There's certain characters that can also be Lego skins. So I don't know if they would sell an exclusive Lego skin. There's all kinds of stuff. But do you think maybe that's a route to do this, uh, Gene? Uh, I think... <clears throat> the reason why Fortnite is amassing all of these different IP and all of these different characters is because it all goes back to Tim Sweeney's uh, intention to create the metaverse. Um, so the reason why all these IP are mixing in is because he's trying to create the perfect uh, climate, I guess, for a metaverse where uh, where IP can interact with each other uh, forever. I don't think Nintendo is going to buy into that until it's the, the metaverse is already a thing, and that and it's it's not like it, we no longer have headlines about what is a metaverse or whatever like that. It's just like oh, we're just in the metaverse or whatever. Um, you know, obviously, I, the metaverse, the concept of the metaverse is getting clowned on a lot, but I think it's the, the part of that is because of the fact that Zuckerberg poisoned the well and made everyone think that it's just going to be VR and, and like legless people walking around. When you know it's it's going to be some kind of three D space that people the people interact with in, um, I think the metaverse. I still think the meta something like the metaverse will happen, and Nintendo will be very 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 late in in uh, joining that. So I don't see uh, them joining Fortnite ever uh, within within our, our our near near lifetimes. I think it's a good point. It's yeah. a really good point, and and you know what? The longer they hold out the more their value goes up. Like they'll be exactly the one, right. It, it, the Dagan brings up an excellent point. I mean, look, look at, look at how they price are the games. It, uh, it takes for the depreciation value for Nintendo games is uh, forever. You know, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, you still have to buy for 60, 60 bucks or whatever. You know, my friend has, has been waiting for a sale forever. And I'm like, dude, what are you waiting for a sale for? It's a Nintendo game. They don't go on sale. <laughs> you know, you're lucky. Mario Kart eight will go on sale, you know? Uh, and sometimes maybe you'll get like a Zelda Link, Link's Awakening from from how many years ago, you know? Right. On sale. Yeah. Um, 
But Tears of the Kingdom is never going to go on sale, you know? No, no. <laughs> they've established for a long that time. Base. Mario Wonder is, no. not, is probably not going to go on sale for a long time because they're, they're going to want to milk the, 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 the long-term sales of Mario Wonder because Mario Wonder is going to have long, long-term sales. And they're like, no, we, we don't need to put this on sale. We, we are not worried about the health and long-term sales of, of Mario Wonder. Like Square Enix is with the, the, the health and, and long-term sales of Final Fantasy 16, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Just like what Dagan says, it's 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 a way to 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 project value to people, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. There's just no and there's just no better way than to say that you're 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 above the riff the Fortnite riffraff, you know. Um. Because it's it's just it's it's just a it's just a, a mosh pit of of uh, uh. I I haven't played Fortnite in maybe a year now. I think over a year. But even back then, it was it was ridiculous, you know. Uh, there there were Batman comic books that really like made that canonized and explained very thoroughly how Fortnite works, you know. That's and, insane. <laughs> I forgot and, about that. And it's it's it, all these characters go into Fortnite and they forget who they are, which is which is you know it says something about the art, you know. Uh, like Batman goes in there and he doesn't know what like who he is or what he what, what he does. He just knows that he's really really good fucking detective. <laughs> he, he can punch really, really hard, and and that that's what he's doing, you know. But otherwise, he picks up a gun because he's completely uh, forgotten his own history, you know. And There's something I, else going on here. Have you guys heard yeah, this? I meant to I meant to put this in the Discord when I first heard this a couple of weeks ago, and it's very it's still largely un, unsubstantiated. But there is a rumor that the next mainline Mario game is going to be some sort of Nintendo Omniverse thing. Have you guys seen anything about this? No. So there is a chance that Nintendo is working on their own internal Fortnite type thing where all it's going to be a mashup. I mean, they're already doing that with things like Smash and Mario Kart, obviously, but something where there's going to be a playable 3D Mario thing and it's going to be, as Gene says, I love putting it this way, a Nintendo mosh pit of that's what it's going to be that's what the new so there is the off chance that nintendo is fixing to do their own thing with this and that's why they're holding out too where it wouldn't make sense to have it on both fronts i guess i kind of i hope let me just let me just interject here i hope this is not the next mario game i don't think it's a good idea right and i think it's it seems like Everything cool about why Nintendo's staying out of the um out of the fray with Fortnite, I think then it gets into the same problems just doing it on their own terms. So I hope they're not. But that is that people are starting to talk about this. So I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I think about how behind N- Nintendo was on just basic online play. <laughs> <laughs> You know, with with Wii and yeah, uh, that's true. on you know the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection and stuff like that, and how it was just. I think they even made statements like people don't really want to play online. It's like um, <laughs> they did, yeah. yeah, they yeah they do. So it wouldn't surprise me that they are behind on stuff like this, but we shall see. I kind of understand too. I agree that I don't know if I want to see Mario uh singing mr brightside in the new fortnite (laughs) festival mode i just don't i love those two things and i don't think i need them together so (laughs) i'm okay with them being very protective but yeah you know nintendo looked at mario doing like a tiktok dance from 2018 and they're like no this is ridiculous we're we're not we're we're not gonna do that you know but creators can do it all day yeah (laughs) dude crazy that's fine i'm i'm on board with that you know what I'll say though is that if they put like Waluigi in Fortnite, he would be the bell of the ball. Oh, <laughs> oh he really would he, be. He would be though. Actually, you know what? Waluigi actually would be a perfect fit though. So, dude, imagine Waluigi doing a gritty. I mean, that would be no, absolutely. They, he actually has like such a funny like just the lanky body and everything. He the Fortnite dances with like Waluigi would be pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna say that that would be pretty sweet. And I mean like Waluigi holding a gun, perfectly normal. It looks like a bank robber already. They so should that just could put him work. in. Exactly. You won't put him in Smash Brothers and put him in Fortnite. Yeah, I support this. I, I like think I, we should make it happen. Uh, last news item. Gene, I'm going to direct this one mostly towards you. 
Uh, and that's Arkham on Switch is pretty bad. Mm. Uh, my source for this is there's a Digital Foundry video out that I just recommend people go watch. But they're not the only people that have covered this. But particularly Arkham Knight is the game that uh, not only is it severely downgraded in terms of its visuals, but it is running at a lower than 30 frame rate in most instances out in the open world. But also I noticed they talk about this in the video that there's this hitching problem that's so bad that when you see Batman kind of gliding, the okay. camera is moving faster. So he like catches up. It's like he's like rubber banding slightly. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's really bad. So Saber Hoover writes in and says, hey, brick breakers. I was wondering if anyone else, uh, anyone has tried the Batman Arkham games on Switch. The performance isn't great, but having these games on the go is amazing. Having have a wonderful day, gents. Gene, I know you expressed interest in these games coming to Switch. Have you tried them? And even if not, how do you feel about this stinky ass port? <laughs> Did you know that I bought the I bought the Arkham games on the Switch? I actually you, you said you were you were really interested in them yeah, on the yeah, show yeah, a few months yeah, ago. Yeah, I, I could not resist uh, even Couldn't after resist. seeing the rubber the rubber banding. So I bought the whole package. <laughs> so bucks. they're all bad. Uh, not they're just not Arkham Knight. They're not all terrible. Uh, okay. Arkham Knight is bad. It is bad. Uh, the rubber okay. the rubber banding is real. Uh, when you're gliding, uh, gl gliding. In general, not even just as Batman, the act of gliding should be smooth. No matter what kind of object or animal you are, you know, whether you're Batman or Spider-Man or a flying squirrel, uh, when you're gliding or a plane, when you're gliding, you, it should be smooth. It should not be like a train or like, like, like that's about to like derail off the tracks, or whatever. But that's exactly what gliding as Batman in Arkham Light is. Uh, so it's really bad. Anytime that there's anything about like moving through the city at, in any kind of, you know, moderate speed in Arkham Knight, uh, the, the game hangs up. Uh, the Batmobile is completely terrible. Like I, I'm crashing all over the place because I can barely tell, you know, like when uh, the momentum is going to stop or how fast I might be going or, or the acceleration. I, I don't know because there's so many frames that are being skipped, sometimes dropping to zero frames per second, you know, uh, yeah. not even, not, not, I'm not even talking about 15 or 20, which is why the digital foundry video was like, like this game should have been locked 20 frames per second, not even 30. <laughs> um, Cause it's not hitting 30 and it's barely hitting 20. But if, if they did decide to lock it just to straight 20, maybe some things would have been fixed. Um, that said, it's, it's not completely unplayable, but it is it, it, because it's only because I'm a mega tolerating and tanking all the stuff, but I can still play through it. I can still complete objectives, even on the Batmobile. Uh, and you know, Arkham Knight has a lot of Batmobile sections, if you don't know, but yeah. there are so many sections where you're shooting tanks and climbing out the walls and fucking platforming with the goddamn car. And it, it, the, the playing through it reminded me how much I hated those sections. Uh, still don't like uh, them. Uh, still bad. Uh, it's kind of fun, I guess, to, to, to fight the tank sections, though. Uh, but again, it, it makes it hard because of how skippy the frame rates are. Mm. And there's so many effects going on. Um, it's crazy that Arkham Knight is, is, is needed to be completely changed. Uh, all the textures are different. Um, the rain effect is 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 like there's like seventy percent less rain. Um, the uh, the the new uh, uh, Robert uh, the, the Robert Pattinson suit uh, that they added Batman twenty twenty two eclipse the cape clips through his shoulder. Oh, um, that's a so shame. It's like, oh god damn it, man! Like it's a cool suit. None of the other fucking suits clip through the, the clip through the the cape, but this is a, the their, their their new outfit. It, it just clips through. So every time, because you're always watching the, the 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 fucking back end of Batman's shoulders and back, right? And you you just <laughs> right. see his back through his fucking cape, and it's like this is terrible. I don't want to That's be Batman, Robert Pattinson. I don't want to be Pattinson, Bat, Bat Batman, you know, because of this. So I just switch back to the uh, Christopher Nolan uh, suit, which is which is still great and it looks awesome. Um, so that's Arkham Knight and Switch. I don't know if you have any other questions, but um, it just doesn't really run well. Um, play Arkham City. Arkham City is not bad. Uh, it's very, it's very much thirty frames per second, and it still, it still sometimes drops. Mm. But it's basically like you're playing. It's basically the Xbox 360 version, like on a Switch. 
Uh, same with Arkham Asylum, uh, which I think actually runs worse than Arkham City for some reason. Um, <laughs> even though it's a much, much smaller game. Um, so that's why I'm actually just playing Arkham City again because, you know, my God, you can just... You can just play Arkham City again over and over again. It's yeah. But playing Arkham City again reminded me how good that game was. Um, although there are some puzzles or like objectives that get irritating, and I get lost in like the Joker factory um, all the time, every single time. Um, but yeah, I wish they they ported Arkham Origins instead of Arkham Knight. Um, it surely would have run a lot better. It would have run a lot a better. Game. It would have been nice to have Arkham Origins finally get a good port that that that, that doesn't have issues. Uh, although you know, uh, given the quality of these ports, even even Arkham City, it feels like there's no guarantee that Origins would have been would have been ported well. So it's really too bad that the legacy of these games are just like whatever. Um, you know, there, there's decent versions of it on PS4 and Xbox One and PC as well. And so yeah. it is it, it is cool to be able to play Arkham Knight on a, on a Nintendo Switch, but I, do, I already do Ar- own Arkham Knight on Steam, so you can just play it on Steam Deck too, and it will just run like a normal game. Um, right. So, and also the, the, the Switch physical version doesn't come with um, City or uh, Knight. It only comes with Asylum, which is, I guess, okay. I think Arkham Asylum is overall the best game of the series. Yeah, but it is no, it is not my favorite one to replay. It would be Arkham City, so that therefore I do wish Arkham City was also preserved in some kind of cartridge form. So, but yeah, yeah, that's Batman Arkham the Switch. It is exactly what it is reported as. Um, if you if you're into that and if you really want to have have a Batman present on Switch, like me, then yeah, sure, why not. You, you can buy it and just power through uh, all the all the bad stuff on Arkham Knight too because it's it's pretty rough but it's it's still there too the game, the game is still there yeah well I can't say I'm entirely surprised by this but um yeah it's it's good for people to know out there that if this is something you're interested in go and make sure you at least look uh, to see what the caveats. Yeah, are. there's there, there are there are so many caveats. You, you really have to tell yourself, I am just really really desperate for a Batman experience on a Switch. And, <laughs> yeah. And well, you know not? what the thing is, like, there's part of me that wishes they would curate this stuff a little better. It's like, don't put the games on there that the hardware is not really capable of running. I would think also from a developer perspective, I wouldn't want that, even though I'm mm-hmm. getting a little getting a little scratch from it. But there is something funny about the Switch being so old now. If you think about it, right? Little Jimmy was seven years old in 2017. He's playing Mario Kart and Snipper Clips as a little kid, right? He's ready to graduate to the big boy games. It's six, seven years on. He's the kid's 13 going on 14, whatever. He wants to play some Batman games. It's almost responsible that they're on there in case that's little Jimmy's only console. And I understand the conceit of playing it on the go too. I like that also. But there is something there about, yeah, the Switch is kind of old enough where maybe they should offer this stuff for the once little kids that are now going into high school, <laughs> you know, during the during the span of this of this uh, console's lifespan, which is kind of a funny thought. So, so I'm, usually I'm down on it, but then when I think of those kids, I'm like, ah, if Jim Jim doesn't have a, P- a PS5 or even a PS4, how else is he going to do it? You know what I mean? He's got to take the uh he's got to take the b experience rather than not playing it at all i guess oh also let me mention real quick and also digital foundry mentioned it too but there is a mini game uh, pretty early on in arkham knight where uh, batman has to locate uh fucking uh, uh one of the bad guys by using the radio towers so then the radio towers has to like match up in the cones uh the the, the fucking cones aren't aren't there in arkham knight uh, oh, on switch, wow. uh, so you you are just spinning the analog sticks and hoping that you're hitting something, uh, but the visual uh, 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 confirmation that anything is happening on a screen is not there. This is uh, I don't know if it's a bug. Uh, it's just it, 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 it's hard to say that it's a bug when it's just like missing. It's just like yeah. not no the, feedback. Like, that the puzzle is just not there visually. You know, that's a shame. It still works when, when you spin the sticks around, but there's just nothing happening on the screen. Um, so I had to look up a video of it and pretend that I was echoing like what he was, how he was moving the thumbsticks on the fucking 
original uh, Xbox One or PS4 version. Uh, that was the way I handled that that puzzle. And so I don't know if there's any. I'm I'm, I'm I haven't gone that far in the game. I I just met the Arkham Knight in Arkham Knight. And uh, so, but there's a lot more puzzles, and who knows if there's more puzzles that just don't work too. So, yeah, a lot of lot, lot of caveats here for for Arkham Knight, yeah. especially. <laughs> so um, yeah, buyers, buyers beware. beware. Buyers beware. I, I this this is not something I could recommend. Only if you only if you are really really wanting to spend the money. That's it. If you're hor- that horny for Batman on Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have one quickie. For you guys, and that is there are some new Nintendo Switch, uh, nin- well, Nintendo Switch Online, Nintendo 64 games out. And to kick us off, Wiley Olmstead says, hey, punchies. So it looks like we're getting a pretty nice month for Nintendo 64 releases on NSO. 1080 Snowboarding, Jet Force Gemini and Harvest Moon 64. Mm. Do you guys have any experience with these? I do not, although I am pretty I am interested in giving Jet Force Gemini a shot as it's the only rare, as in the company, Nintendo 64 game I've never played. Does the crew have any interest in booting these up for a test run? Thanks and happy holidays. So I got to say right off the bat, guys, I've not played these three games at all. Never once in my life have I played them. And so, yeah, I don't know. I was going to go to you guys. Have you guys uh, played any of these? Are there any gems here? Yeah, I played snowboarding actually. Um oh, for nice. on emulation, I have to admit, for I was, you know, reviewing this upcoming big N64 book. That was one of my games. And I I went in knowing that game was highly regarded and supposed to be very fun and it was. And I think that's one of the the games from the N64 generation that does it best because you're it's, you know, you're relying on very blocky, jaggy, primitive 3D graphics. But the game is still fun. You know, the, the mechanics are still there. It's fluid. It's fun to play. It's almost a, it has an addictive quality to it. Uh, you know what it reminded me of a lot for some reason? It reminded me a lot of F-Zero, just in how kind of addictive it was. Graphically, you know, obviously doesn't hold up very well. But that was a, the other ones I didn't know. But that one, that one was really fun. And I remember giving it a good review in the book. I guess the book will be out next year. That's Pat Contry's book. Third right. uh, review book, yeah, but yeah, that's the only one for me. Micah, do you have any interest in checking out, uh, even if it's just for I don't know twenty minutes? I'm kind of curious about Harvest Moon sixty four. Oh, yeah, because I'm I'm one of the losers that I've never really played Harvest Moon, but I love Stardew no. Valley, so I feel like I got to know where it comes from. Oh, I love Harvest Moon, and so I the first one I played was on GameCube, and I was very late to the party on that. Uh, a friend gifted me their GameCube in high school, along with some games, including Harvest Moon, oh, wow. and I was obsessed with it. And so, yeah, that as soon as I saw it on the list, was like I would love to go back and play that one because it is. I love Harvest Moon, and like you, you know, Stardew Valley and the other, you know, clones. I do just very much enjoy those types of games. That's my cozy game for sure. That slight level of anxiety because you got to get all your chores done. But I I do love those games. And that's the one that really jumped out at me. I was like, oh, I really actually do want to like try that one and see where the series like came from. It's because it is, you know, sorry, on GameCube. Yeah, maybe that, that's a pretty old game, but it'd be nice to go back even further with the series. Gene. Do any of the three of these have you have you played them? Are you interested in checking them out? Mm, I haven't I haven't played any of them honestly, to be quite honest. Uh, obviously, I've always been interested uh, interested in Harvest Moon. Um, I think I played the original Super Nintendo version, but I forget it's, it's been so long. But yeah, um, yeah, I've I've been checked out of the Nintendo Switch uh, 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 console uh, sp- space for a while. So, um, but yeah, Jeff Force Gemini is something I might check out. Uh, just because it's an old rare game, and I, I just like for historical purposes, that might be fun. But yeah, that's about it. Let's move over to what we've been playing. Uh, I guess I'll I'll kick us off here. First, I've been playing Lethal Company, not a game on Switch. I don't know if you guys have seen anything about this game. I I don't know if I could ever convince Colin to do it, but I want to do. I think it'd be so funny to do a Sacred Symbols Let's Play of Lethal Company. <laughs> if I say this, then maybe enough people will pester him. We don't do Let's Plays, but this game 
is so you got to use proximity chat. You can't use Discord. It's so dependent on that. There's you and three other players. You're going on different moons and you're junkers. You got to go get junk from these facilities on the moon. And like I said, there's proximity chat. So you can't hear someone unless you're near them. But when you go in these facilities, you're not alone. There are monsters in the facility that they take on different forms. And so you got to go in, scrap, bring it back to your ship. Uh, But they add a lot of different fun elements like someone at the ship can have a walkie talkie and you can talk to each other and the person at the ship can see a little radar so you can see where the junk is. Right. But where things get super fun is, like I said, that proximity chat where you'll hear down the hallway, you hear someone say like, oh, fuck. And then they just they're silent. You're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Did uh, did Ben die? Is he dead? And you go back there and you like find his body. And you're like, holy shit, he is gone. Or if someone's trying to make like a tough jump and then they fall down this bottomless pit, you'll hear like their voice like ah, as they like fall down. It's uh, it is a really, really, really fun game. It's only ten dollars on Steam. So I, I can't recommend it enough. Maybe I can convince some people in the company to play. Maybe that's a good last year. We did a holiday time stream with Jaffe where we played Call of Duty. Maybe I could I know I could at least get Chris and Ben to do a lethal company stream. So maybe that's something to consider. The other two games, one Fortnite, uh, Fortnite. Yeah. Well, I'll go, I'll go Fortnite first Fortnite. They've been having these new modes. We talked about it. The Lego mode is pretty fun. The festival Fortnite mode, uh, the festival mode, which is like rock band uh, hurts my soul just because it's, <laughs> it's has the elements of rock band, but none of the parts that truly make it fun, which is playing with friends in the same room. And, Uh, The cool controllers, it's just pressing buttons on your controller and I'm not into it. But the Lego mode, which is like Minecraft, is really fun. So I've been having a lot of fun diving in back into Fortnite. I got the Mikasa skin from Attack on Titan. So I have dude, I've got her and she flies in. She's got uh, the dragon from Dragon Ball Z that nice. she flies in on <laughs> and uh it's just uh it's a complete it's nice. mashup she has a scar I should probably go back to fortnite honestly oh my god yeah she uh dude her back bling uh no spoilers but it's the uh i don't know how far you've gotten digging but it's like the the uh needle the syringe oh sure yeah, yeah 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 it's dude that's it's it. pretty cool oh, i like i cool. have her and i have levi i don't have oh i don't have ed and Yeager. But I do have Levi, so I gotta have Levi. Yeah, nobody wants Aaron Jaeger, anyways. So. No, yeah, let us down. <laughs> uh, the last game I'm excited to finally be playing is One Piece Odyssey. Mm. Does this have a Switch release? I don't I think, think it does. does. Does I it? it? I think I, I swear to God, I, I bought right. it on the Switch just because just because it was what it was anime related and it's on the Switch. So mm. let me make sure mm. One Piece Odyssey. Uh. Switch. I'm pretty sure you're right. I feel like I saw it at some point. Uh, yeah, no, it's. it's not. Oh no, it's not. It's not yeah. Man, I must have saw a different One Piece game on the store then. Anyway, mm. sorry, another non-Switch game. I am finally playing it because I'm finally like 740 episodes into the anime, which is approximately when the game would take place. Not mm-hmm. that it's it's not canon, and it's not not canon because Oda did work on it. And that's the one thing that's very clear to me as I play it. It's not amazing, but it definitely has Oda's touch on it. In fact, when you start at the game, there's a beautiful draw, like drawing that he did about the game and all the characters that you meet that are exclusive to the game. Like he at least approved. The, like they look good. They look like One Piece characters. And the other thing, too, is that while I guess you could play it without knowing a lot of One Piece, they reference stuff that is like only a few hundred episodes in. They are not afraid to reward the hardcore One Piece fans That's about cool. different stuff. I like that. It's it's very lovingly made. It's it's cool. There's all the abilities that you do are stuff that they do in the game, and to see them do it in 3D, um, and you know you're you're choosing different moves. It's really really cute and fun. Again, I don't necessarily think it's an awesome game so far it's a little basic in terms of its rpg combat and its world but as a one piece fan it's pretty damn good Mm. and i'm having a good time finally happy that i can actually play it so that's about it 
for me, but Micah, you have on here, you're, you finished Mario RPG, which I kind of yeah. feel like I've let I haven't let it go permanently, but there was other stuff that was, that was appealing to me. So I, I put it on break, but you're all done. Yeah, um, this was a short enough game that I really wanted to just get that. I wanted to you know wrap it up as as Jeff Keeley would urge me to do. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, fantastic <laughs> game. Um, I finished the game in about 12 and a half hours. What really, you know, was highlighted for me as I played this was how much this clearly inspired other games, such as, you know, Gene mentioned, you know, many weeks ago, Sea of Stars, which I was totally in love with. And Gene was like, well, you're going to love Super Mario RPG because it, this draws so much inspiration from that. Mm. And now finally getting to play it for the first time. Like, absolutely. It's really cool to see how many games, you know, this one has inspired and influenced. And it also, not to knock on Sea of Stars, but it makes it slightly less impressive <laughs> when I realize like, oh, wow, you borrowed so much from this. Sea of Stars, incredible. Really great story, awesome character design and like the battles and everything. But when I see truly how much was borrowed, it's like a little funny of like, oh, it's a little less groundbreaking now because I can see how much inspiration they, they took from Mario RPG. But I adored it. It's something that really stands out to me is the lack of, you know, lots of dialogue. The way that they tell the story through the animations is so it's just so well done and segueing into the second game that I'm playing. So I have to make the comparison. So I started playing um, star ocean, the second story uh, remake and that game has so much dialogue. Like it's, you know, your classic JRPG with like just a ton of text and it's, such a harsh transition to go from Mario, which was telling a really cute little story with very little dialogue, to this game just spelling out everything for you to the point that it gets annoying. And I love JRPGs. I know they're very wordy, but it's like you go to the you know, you go to the inn and you're like, thank you for the room. And she's like, no, don't mention it. And you're like, all right, see you tomorrow. She's like, see you in the morning. And it's like, all this could have <laughs> just been like, I walk up to the desk, I give her the money. They say, have a good night. Character nods. I walk away like they infer nothing <laughs> through animation almost. And it's all text versus Mario being able to tell a lot of the story without words. And I just find that contrast very funny. And it, it took me a little bit of time to get into Star Ocean because of that, because it just felt so slow the way that they had to really just detail everything through text instead of letting me kind of grasp some things based on like character body language and stuff like that. They just kind of chose not to, to use that method of storytelling. So it, it's just quite the, the contrast to play these two games side by side. But Mario RPG for being such a short game really had me so invested in the little characters. Like from the second I met Mallow, I, I would have died for him. <laughs> I would have mm -hmm. defended that small little, little boy with my life. And it just was... It was nice to have a shorter experience for an RPG. I adore these types of games. They're often my favorites, but they typically are, you know, 60 plus hours. And I'm just not always in the zone for something like that. So being able to have that style of gameplay with that kind of short time commitment of it took me 12 and a half hours. I mean, just a fantastic combination of features for me. And for anyone who likes RPGs, but maybe doesn't, Maybe they feel the same way I do that you don't always want to play a super long game or you just don't have time for it. For someone who has kids, for example, and they don't want to play something like Xenoblade that has hundreds of side missions to do and just hours on hours of content, Mario RPG will give you the all the you know feelings of playing an RPG without a huge time commitment, without feeling like you're missing out on everything if you don't do all the side stuff. Because I did kind of you know, played the game a bit quickly. I didn't do all of the optional things. I did some of them. Um, I used a guide for some things to get like better items and such, but it really didn't make me feel like I was missing out. It's a game I feel has a great value of if you want to play more, you can play more. If you don't want to do everything, you don't feel like you've missed out like something like Sea of Stars or Octopath Traveler 2, for example, which makes you feel like, well, you didn't get the full experience if you don't spend 100 hours playing this, you know? So I appreciate what the game was able to do in so little time. And now I have, you know, switching over 
to Star Ocean and, you know, a, a more wordy, a more verbose game, but enjoying it. I'm about two hours into that and the combat's really cool. I wasn't sure how I would like it because it's not, it's not like anything I've really played before. So I think the combat's great. The story is finally going somewhere. It's a really slow start to the game, but it's also really pretty. This is a gorgeous game to look at. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting more into it and seeing what this is all about. It's my first time ever playing a Star Ocean game. Nice. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about Star Ocean. I have the original PS1 version, but I love the, you know, the 2D HD stuff. That's great. I'm, dude, I'm so excited yeah. for that uh, Dragon Quest one that they're doing at some point. It's kind of disappeared into the void. But uh, Gene, let's go over to you. I want to say this to you. I have always I always have my Twitter up in case there's breaking news. I got some breaking news hmm. from Dexerto. McDonald's plans to re-release snack wraps in 2025. What? Mm. Interesting. And I oh, believe so that was you and Micah, right? That on well, this we show wanted, we talked about snack wraps. Well, we want a chicken select though, right? You're right, but that's what's in the snack wrap. So you think they'll bring them both back? Yeah. Like if they, because that's what was in the snack wrap yeah, yeah, was yeah, the yeah, chicken yeah, yeah. select. They got to bring back the three and the five piece, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you'll be able to play GTA Six and get a snack wrap <laughs> in 2025. <laughs> so, but yeah, Gene, uh, what have you been uh, playing? Okay, here we go. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I blocked the Daily Loud on Twitter, but I unblocked them just so I can see their their post. McDonald's is bringing back the fan favorite snack print in 2025. Oh wow! Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. You'll be playing GTA Six. Oh and my god, snack that's that's crazy. Yeah, wow. All good things are happening in 2025. Oh my god. Um, what have I, what have you been playing? Uh, interesting question. Um, the Arkham trilogy on the Switch. I've actually been. I, I'm actually trying to do to, to kind of play Arkham City. I love the challenge maps in Arkham in Arkham City. I just love being thrown into like a, an arena and just having a bunch of dudes to beat up. You know, that's always fun. So I'm actually trying to unlock the challenge maps and also Catwoman Free Roam. Right? Oh God, Arkham City was so generous with content. Like the fact that you can free roam as as Catwoman. That's amazing. Um. I've been. Uh, I finally finished River City Girls two, nice. um, game that came out last year, and I really, really just wanted to just get through it. Um, so I finally, I finally beat it. Loved it. Had a great time. Um, my main character was Kunio, uh, the main character of the River City uh, series. Series. It was such a pleasure to be able to to do combos and 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 be him again. Um, yeah, I think that's it for the Switch for me. Uh, otherwise, uh, today it's uh, December eleventh. Uh, the Alan Wake Two uh, update uh, releases today, with a new game plus and a new ending and new video clips and new scenes uh, in the in the, in the new game plus run. So, oh, wow. I'm very excited to see what what more lore drops are are in what's quote unquote the final draft of Alan Wake Two. Um, it is too bad that they couldn't just add this in in the final game. Um, yeah, it, it it does feel like maybe Alan Way Two was rushed out the door. One with all the bugs, it was a, a super buggy game. And two with this new game plus update that adds a new ending and and everything. And it's like, what's what's going on here? What happened? Like, it's is is it was a part of the strategy to to keep engagement up because because yeah, it, it is keeping me engaged. Like, oh, I'm gonna play the game again. Um, and it's coming out so quickly, that, and I'm still I'm still like in the Alan Wake vibe that that I'm not out of it, you know. Uh, Final Fantasy 16, I downloaded the DLC, uh, so that that's another issue of DLC coming later. But it's coming half a year later, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the DLC is substantial enough for me to really, really want to dive back in. Um, yeah. But I kind of want to do. I, I never finished Final Fantasy mode, the, the more difficult mode. So maybe I could, I could do that too. But there's also I still need to finish Sea of Stars, or I still need to play Sea of Stars. I haven't even touched that yet. Um, and I also did buy Star Ocean, um, but what turned me off from Star Ocean, the second story, is the fact that the that this is a, a huge pet peeve of mine, but I hate it when in video games the character can only run. Um, oh. mm. I'm just just not a fan of, of always running characters, and for, for, for Star Ocean second story, they, it used to have a walk and run button, and they deleted, they, they deleted it. And made the character always run, and it's like, oh my god, I, I, 
I'm I'm not a fan of of, of characters running all over the place. This is this part of what, the reason why I don't like Fortnite as much as I should because there's no walk animation in Fortnite. The only way you can go slowly anywhere in Fortnite is jog in place very slowly. <clears throat> uh, that was always my beef with the Infamous series. In, uh, both Infamous series, are the one with Cole McGrath and the guy that look, that that, that does, or, or, uh, Dagan looks like every week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I always forget his name. Uh, I forget his name too. And we're never going to remember Dagan. I, I, I think. promise you that. We, it's we something never... like Selson Blue Shampoo. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will never acknowledge that man's name. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, like they were always running in the Infamous games. Um, so that's just like my beef with Star Ocean right now. And I, and I should probably either get over it or I also uh, bought the, the first Star Ocean, which does include a walk button. And I'm like, yay, maybe I should just play this one instead, <laughs> even though it's probably it's not nearly as good. Um, I don't know. Uh, what else have I been playing? Oh, and uh, GTA 4 on the Steam Deck. Um, nice. Runs super great. Um, looks cool. Uh, I, I'm, I am playing the new updated version that got updated in like 2000, 2018, 2009. And unfortunately, I don't know how familiar you guys are with GTA 4. Um, have you guys played it at all? I played yeah. some of it. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah, but, it's been a while. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, all the music stations, or a lot of the music stations, are different now. Uh, oh, oh, bummer! And especially the, the the Russian station, which was which was like the centerpiece, like radio station. They, they, like this was a game about Slavic people, so they had a whole Slavic radio station, and almost all the songs are gone. Uh, and that's just disappointing. The very first wow. song you hear in the game is is, is a completely different one um the, the the old russian hip-hop is gone it makes me so sad so i'm running around gta4 liberty liberty city and it looks awesome and it still looks the same and it's uh the writing of the game still holds up i feel like you know the pacing uh the pacing of it and 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 the witty the wittiness is still pretty witty you know um It'd be fun to have a knockback, actually. Uh, I, I feel like that would be a fun. The, the that Grand would be Battle a fun series one. would be a, a pretty fun knockback. Series, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. Yeah, that could be fun, but um, because there's so much to chew on, uh, even in the story and and in, and in the gameplay. But uh, and but that's just been fun to play on the Steam Deck. Um, just to just to, to have have her on in bed with me. But yeah, that's what I've been playing right now. Nice. Kind of. And Dave, what about you? <laughs> Oh, easy peasy. I mean, Colin and I just finished Final Fantasy IV. I was playing that on the Switch personally uh, for Knockback. We recorded that last week. So we were able to put that one to bed. It took me, I thought, I remember the game being longer. It took me like 24 hours, which was pretty long. I think Colin weighed in, platinumed it at 18 or something, which is typical. There's usually that difference of, you know, the completionist and the also six hour deficit compared to how long it takes me to play RPGs. But that was fun. But you know what? I took kind of the baton and just ran with two things that kind of stemmed from Final Fantasy IV for me. I figured with Final Fantasy XVI, it's been coming up a lot this year in Colin and I's conversation. And it's been really piquing my interest because he's rarely this enthusiastic about a game unless it says Naughty Dog on it somewhere. So I'm mm. like, what is this game that he's so that he's raving about? And then it really came to a head with the Final Fantasy IV conversation. We talked for about three hours about it. Final Fantasy XVI kept coming up in the conversation. I was like, I got to play this mm. game. So I started it a couple of nights ago. So I got that on the way. Final Fantasy XVI. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Of course not on Switch. On play, uh, you know, on, over on PlayStation. Of course, yeah. 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 But, um, but you know what's exciting about it, Gene? My backlog, usually I would never visit something this early. So mm -hmm. it's barely be – for me, this is pretty – pretty contemporary to it. yeah you're, you're kind of here on the ground floor now that's awesome it's <laughs> good so i'm excited and then you know what i'm you loving the intro so what you think of what you think of the first like oh dude like it's five so, minutes even. Oh. it's so good it's so, so beautiful good. and it's so reverent to what i expect out of a final fantasy mm. game having not experienced much beyond eight you know there's a big final fantasy lapse for me between you know from nine to 16 i haven't really played anything mm. So I like that it's modern, but it also feel I could feel the tradition and everything, you know. And I'm I'm barely scratching the surface, so I'm really excited. I know I it's nice. This is a nice timing for me because I'll be be able to play over the break, and then I just figured too, if I'm coming off the JRPG thing, 
Sea of Stars really interested me. I had only played the demo, but I bought the game. So I kind of said, let me start that too. And then, of course, as promised, I'm st- I'll be starting Tears of the Kingdom, really getting into Tears of the Kingdom next week. So hey, that'll you can be... do a spoiler cast. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know our listeners have been asking for a spoiler cast. Um, I, that I would know. be cool. That would, I, it would be I, cool, but I don't, know, I don't know what is there to talk about anymore. In, in I know. Story. It feels yeah. like it's a day late dollar short. Yeah. For me. I don't know. If the, if the comments still want it, let us know if, if there's a real thirst for it. But Because it is funny. I, I still think about the fact that I ne- I've never actually written a review of, of Elden Ring. <laughs> mm. Like, mm. like that, that's still something that's on the back of my mind. Like, man, Another I never thing. actually like put... Elden Ring put a put, put a big old score on Meta, uh, on Metacritic for Elden Ring. That's weird. Yeah. It's daunting when a game's so big. You exactly, know I mean? it is. It yeah. just is. It's hard Even to wrap. Tears is so big too. You know. Oh um, my god, dude! I'm so excited to just have three clean weeks to just. Uh, of course, I'll be juggling the other two games in there, but to really have substantial time to invest. You know, that's what I. I that's what I needed. And you know, now that the everything's winding down with the commercials. And with the pods, you know, like I really have, uh, it's not a good time for income, but the trade off is I get some time to play games. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Put the kids to work or something. God, can they just, yeah. can they pull their weight for three weeks so like dad could play some games around here? Yeah. Put them to work. I mean, bring back child labor as far as I'm concerned. I'm all for it. The children yearn for the mines, they yearn for it. Yeah. They want to breathe in that coal dust. You know, <laughs> it's good for character. That's what yeah, I heard. I don't... Absolutely. <laughs> I, the, 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 Dagan, were you a big fan of Calvin and Hobbes growing up? Oh my god, he, massive. Oh, massive. Well, massive. first of all, you kind of look like Calvin's dad. At, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just realized <laughs> you got you got like a similar like uh, I don't know shape. I guess I never yeah, I never thought posture. about that, but you might be. Yeah, you might be onto something. With yeah, that. I mean, Calvin's dad was cool as fuck. So I mean, like I mean that as a, as a, as a compliment. But yeah. I mean, the fact that he always, the fact that he always said that to Calvin, like forever stuck in my mind. And, I'm <laughs> all, and it's supposed to be a negative, but I'm always thinking, yeah, it does build character though. Like it, th- th- that is, that is a good thing, you know? Yeah, totally. And also that wry sense of humor. Like sometimes when you would say that stuff to Calvin, like, mm-hmm. you know, for as clever as Calvin was as a six year old, it would just, with those, the sarcasm would go over his head. The parent sarcasm would go over mm-hmm. his head. Oh man, so special. He just, Watterson, did you know he just put out a new book that he co he wrote and co illustrated with another illustrator called, what's it called? It's on my shelf back there. Can I read it? Oh, The Mysteries, it's called. It's mm-hmm. really strange. You would pick this book up. If you didn't read any of the print, you would just be, you would never know it was Bill Watterson. But it's the first thing he's given us in like 30 years. It's very random. But it was kind of cool. It's kind of neat. And it makes me think like, is he, and the fact that he's collaborating with somebody, it's like, is he, is he going to give us more stuff? Because supposedly the, the guy painted watercolors for years and just burned them because mm-hmm. he didn't want oh. them to get out into circulation. Like he's. <laughs> What, what a boss, man! What a Chad, dude. That's so sad. The, 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 his commitment to to being a recluse is amazing. I love it's it. Unbelievable. It's, it's, it's great. Salinger like. Yeah, yeah. We don't have people like that that uh, no. often these days. You know, it was Salinger yeah, no, and, and Watterson. You know. Um. <laughs> yeah. Good shit. Okay, guys. So we're gonna wrap things up pretty quick here. We have so many different shows recording. We only have one Zencaster account, but I want to end the show with Matt Danger 87 and uh Dave we're going to have a we talked a little bit behind the scenes we're going to have Dagan's segment don't worry we're not oh, we're not shadow hey, canceling no. what, what the fuck is happening is do, do we have an invader Micah yeah yeah <laughs> the man startled me scared the shit out of me <laughs> I just saw you look surpri- I heard something but I didn't know what happened yeah what was that sound I was calling naked it was, it was- no, he's not naked. He's doing his southern man voice. Oh, and that's... I just, just barged into my office. Goodness. <laughs> that is punching up debut. I think it is. It might be. It took a year, wow. but uh okay, so let's we'll quickly Our go around. Acknowledged us finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. <laughs> From uh Matt Danger, 87. Let's end off with this guys for our our last recording of the year, but not the last episode. It says, hello, my fellow Brick Fisters. What are your gaming plans over the holiday break, either on Switch or other platforms? 
wishing all of you at LSM the very happiest of holidays. Take care, gang. So let's go around and just say, you know, we're taking, let's see, we're trying to take off from the 15th through the first, really. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly going to happen for me, but it'll be at least less. We'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah. Micah, what are you going to do with some of that time off? So I have two big decisions to make because I really want to play Final Fantasy 16. Mm. I also really want to play uh, Yakuza 7 because I bought the man who erased his name. Well, I also, I already have Yakuza mm. 7. I bought it when it came out. I just never got to it. So I don't know. I, I'm not going to have time to play both of those over the holiday break, but it's just like, which one do I want to try and get Yakuza through? It's probably going to be Yakuza. Yeah, yes. that's the thing. Uh, that's been on the, that's been in the backlog longer. So I'm thinking I'm going to play that so that then I can play my copy of uh, Man Who Erased His Name, which I bought on PlayAsia because I had to have the physical edition of it. So that that's the goal is I'm going to try it already? and... Did you get yours copy already? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it in the okay. mail I, I, uh, last week. Okay. I'll yeah, and it, it's got... The, they didn't have the English cover of, um, you know, when it finally got like mm -hmm. fully revealed, it was like the Chinese cover and they actually sent an email saying, do you still want it? And I was like, yeah, so long yeah. as you can still play it in English, yes, I'll, I'll take yeah, it. Doesn't it. Matter. And that it's, is the patch you download. Cool, so. Yeah. Exactly. I just like owning physical games and I like owning, you know, the whole Yakuza series. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. It's going to be uh, Yakuza 7 so that I can then continue the series. But Final Fantasy 16 is also very tempting. Hmm. Yeah, Final Fantasy 16. I mean, Dagan was just talking about it. the game's fucking awesome. So, Dag, what are you hoping? to clear off as far as gaming this holiday yeah i mean i just mentioned tears of the kingdom i'm gonna i really mm. want to you know go from a to z with the game i really want to be done with it by the time we usher in the new year you know what the other thing that happened to me was though with gene talking about alan wake earlier i was reminded i tried to play a big fan of the first game tried to play the second game on steam downloaded it onto my laptop and my laptop, which I had heard this was going to happen, but I was like, my laptop's only a couple years old. It's a nice laptop, has a souped up graphics card. I'm going to be fine. Download the game. Games like your computer sucks. We're not running it. Mm -hmm. We're not doing this on your computer. Well, it's a, it's a, like, you, you're playing out. on an Epic too. You weren't playing. It's not. On, it's not on. Yes. Steam. Yeah. Yes. So. That's important. Yeah. Right. That's important to note. It, it's not on Steam like the first game. It's on Epic. It's through, mm -hmm. it's via Epic. So I was like, and yeah, holy the shit, the rumors, you, yeah, you're, you, you, the rumors are true. I thought this, this computer was great. <laughs> yeah. This is my animation computer. You know, this is the one I use for After Effects and Premiere yeah. and everything. You know, so it's like I was startled. So I have to figure out whether I'm going to see it through and soup up my graphics card again, I guess, for so I could stay on PC or if I'm just going to play over on uh on PS5. But those are my big plans. And then my, you know, my little backups are Final Fantasy 16 and, and Sea of Stars. I'll be, I'll be dealing with those too. And I'll be, I feel like adventure and RPG will be out of the way. And I'll come in with something fresh in a new year. I'm thinking about flirting with possibly playing Street Fighter 6 online. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be painful. I know it's going to be really bad for my ego. But I feel like I got to get back into fighting form. I was never in Evo fighting form. Don't get it twisted. Like I was never that good, mm -hmm. but I was, I could hold my own mid tier. I was mid as the kids say, I was mid, but I mean, I'm like so bad at fighting games online with street fighter five. So I feel like yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll have the RPG stuff and the heavy lift. And as far as time investment, that'll be put aside and then I'll be able to play some fighting games in January. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Gene, any, final end of the year wrap up yeah i think up, yeah. Yeah, i'm actually gonna finally finish persona 5 after all these years hell you yeah know? uh you know mike is just getting to yakuza 7 and i i feel like yakuza 7 is very much like kind of like a cousin to persona 5 both games are very long but they're both very cool and wacky uh interesting turn-based games um both are very very japanese um, I was halfway through Persona 5 and then I, I think I got sick or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, I just need to finish it. It's, it's, it's about time. And I hear, and everyone always tells me, cause I like Persona 5. I, 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 mm -hmm. So far I don't like it as much as four, I, but I do like five, but everyone tells me that the ending, the, the final stretch of five goes crazy. 
and that that's it's like so what really good. like yeah. like what puts it over the edge for a lot of people. I say, okay, well, I'll wait for that because you know, Persona Four ended pretty pretty good too. I wouldn't say it, it ended the strong the strongest, but I did like the game overall and like the vibe overall. But maybe for Five ends so strong that it's just it's just gonna really turn things around. But I'm excited for that. I'm excited to check it out finally. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, ending of Persona Five is amazing. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I, and I have I, I've been completely unspoiled on it this whole time. It's amazing. Ooh, so, wow, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, I have no idea what's going to happen. It's great. My holiday goal. I'll probably be playing a bunch of different things, but my goal over this break is to finish Baldur's Gate three. Well, that I'm too. On yeah, Act 3. That, that's also mine too. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Act three. Uh, I'm trying to get, you know, I, I put it down for a little bit so I could play other stuff. I'm trying to get back in really want to finish it as it is a game that, uh, definitely is very, very important to me. Very, very high on my list for top games. I feel like I got to finish it. Uh, not that it's like, I'm not struggling to finish it. It's just, it's a big, big game. That's very, it's kind of overwhelming in act three. There's so much stuff going on. So Mm. that's my main goal. Baldur's gate three. So we'll see if I'll be able to accomplish it. Who knows? But guys, we got to end this one off quick here. Uh, Like I said, dude, this week for recording actually is insane. I realized this morning I woke up. You know how you wake up and like you immediately are like, oh, shit, what do I have to do right now? (laughs) I realized, oh, I think I'm recording every day this week. Mm -hmm. So you either at that moment, it's like, do I stay in bed for another 10 minutes and then kind of like panic a little bit, even though there's not really a reason to panic? Or do I just get up and face it? I think I did a little bit of both, but uh, <laughs> that's not easy though, dude. And you know, for you guys out there that don't podcast for a living, I know a lot of you know, but it's hard. It's draining. It because when you're recording every single week, every day of the week, that's tough. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's hard. That's hard work. Yeah, but then you know it'll all be worth it by the well. We'll see. I think we're the some of the production work is going to push into next week, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. But so that's it. For this episode of Punching Up, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy your break. And yeah, thank you to the audience. Uh, Like I said, we'll be back in a week or two weeks from now to do our special interstitial episode. I'll give you guys a tease. It's all about looking back on the switch since we are basically we're not at the end of life cycle, really, but kind of we are. So I want. 2024 to be a year of looking forward so we're going to end this year looking back on all Mm. that the switch has given us love it so thank you guys for listening i hope you guys uh have a great holiday and we'll see you guys soon see you later punching up a nintendo podcast is a product of last stand media and collins last stand llc and is proudly recorded in the usa the show is written and produced by me dustin Furman. My co-hosts are Gene Park, Dagan Moriarty, and Micah Watson. The show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. Punching Up, along with the rest of Last Stand Media shows, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we're grateful for your kind contributions and generosity to our independent endeavor. Thank you.